Good evening. My name is Erin and I have been a registered nurse in the state of Massachusetts for over 20 years, 23 years this year. And I've been in the health and fitness industry for many more years than that. Um, I want to discuss how it has been for me as a nurse during these very strange times. But first I need to describe what type of job I have because it needs explanation since it's not something everyday people are very aware of. Um, when people think of nurses, they think of a nurse going to a hospital for a eight or 12 hour shift, stay there, then they go home. But my job is a bit different than that. I'm a home infusion nurse and that means that I go to my patients' homes and give them intravenous meds. It is a specialty job and the only kind of meds I give are through an IV. At every single one of my patients that I see, they are all immunocompromised. And all, if not most of them, require this particular type of infusion for the rest of their life. With that being said, I see many of my patients often and spend a good amount of time in their home each month. For instance, some of them get monthly infusions and some get weekly or twice per month and some infusions can be as long as eight to 10 hours. So you can imagine how long I am in a patient's home for. Um, a lot of my patients I've known for many years, some as long as five years, um, some I know them pretty well. They appreciate me being there, and we have known each other through holidays, birthdays, storms, and good and bad weather. I do have a rather new patient. Um, I've seen her for about six months. Very nervous, immunocompromised, um, in western Massachusetts, who is a bit new to me, but I've been seeing her every three weeks, and I'm in her home for four hours. Always sitting at her kitchen table, always very welcome. But upon my visit, when the corona was at high speed, I was greeted by her in her unfinished basement where she had set everything up for me and informed me that I would be staying there for the entire four hours. It was dark, it was cold, and the air felt thick. But there I sat among her old, unused fitness equipment, boxes of Christmas decorations, men's tools, concrete walls, and concrete floors. I also have an elderly man patient that lives on the North Shore that I have been seeing for three and a half years on a monthly basement, on a monthly basis, and I spend the entire day there. Usually when I arrive, his wife always greets me with warm, homemade, fresh blueberry muffins and my very own fresh pot of tea. I love the smell when I walk in. Sometimes she runs to the grocery store while I'm there knowing that her husband, my patient, won't be left home alone and she takes comfort in that. When she returns, I help her unload the groceries and she is very appreciative. I also take the trash out at the end of the day to help out as much as I can. You see, my patient needs a walker, her husband, <coughs> excuse me, and is not capable of doing household chores anymore that leaves an elderly woman to do it all and even then it's so nice that they feel that they try to take care of me when I am actually there to take care of them until Corona hit. For the next infusion I called them in advance to schedule the next appointment and they were very concerned. I did mention to them that I had another patient who had me stay outside like in the, or in the basement and I was willing to do that if that's what made them comfortable because I'm a flexible person and I'm a flexible nurse. I was trying to do what I could to ease their fears but not thinking that they would have me sit outside for the day but they did agree that it was for the best and I should stay outside for the seven hour infusion. When I, when I arrived, it was the look in their eyes that made me a bit sad and a bit hurt. It was a look of fear, a look of panic, like I was a virus ready to do them harm at the blink of an eye or the breath of my words. It was a look of strangers as if they had never seen or met me before and did not want to get to know me. They were petrified. They were both masked in their own homes. No longer was there the fresh smell of muffins in the kitchen or a warm pot of tea just for me. 
and I was told that if I need to use the bathroom, I could go through the front door to come in and go directly upstairs because that's the one that they never use. And there I sat for seven hours outside on a beach chair, ousted, kicked out. It felt like family had abandoned me. I tried not to take it personal and I knew it was not personal. I knew that they had watched the news all day long and therefore were influenced by the mainstream. And no matter what I said or what I brought to the table, or for as long as they knew me, I wasn't going to change their present outlook. One last patient I'd like to talk about. Finally, my 14-year-old patient, north of Boston. When Corona hit at first, she was happy to be home from school. I mean, what teenager wouldn't be? And while I was there, she spent the day on FaceTime with her friends. They laughed and giggled as they watched movies together on FaceTime. It was quite nice to see them being supportive, positive, and happy about the situation. That happened a few more visits, but the last visit was different since it was August and five months into Corona and five months into staying home for her and having no face-to-face -face contact in person with her friends. It was wearing on her. It felt eerily silent. There was no FaceTime activity, no movie watching with her friends. I asked her why she was not on the phone with her friends and she said, they are probably all still sleeping. They sleep late. I looked down at my watch, one o'clock in the afternoon and her friends were still sleeping. For the remainder of the day, she stayed in bed and slept on and off. I was there for 10 hours. It dawned on me the reason why her friends were not taking, were not talking anymore. The excitement is over, the thrill is gone, the contact is gone, the isolation had set in. They were all in bed in the middle of the afternoon, probably depressed, lonely, possibly questioning life. Finally, I'd like to talk about my health and what that means to me. Most nurses work in hospitals and have to protect themselves from all kinds of contagious illnesses, not just Corona. They need to wear pr protective equipment and fear bringing home a virus to their families. They need to wear protective equipment. And during this, during this pandemic, I've had little risk of catching COVID due to the fact that most of my patients have stayed isolated in their homes for this entire event. And in some instances, I have been the only person to step foot in their home. I take this very seriously. It is not only my job to protect myself, but it's also my job to protect my patients from getting sick. And I do that to my very best ability with all that I know what to do. I do that in many ways and the answer for me does not come in a mask or a vaccine or even PPE, although I obviously follow the nursing protocol. But what is even far more important is how I treat my body, how I treat my mind, and how I care for me. For me, it always starts with what I put on my plate. No processed foods, no refined white sugars, no dairy products, no meat by choice, lots of fruits, lots of vegetables, mostly plant-based. Foods that help me build my body up, not take it down. Foods that improve the function of my immune system, not tear it apart. Foods that have been researched and scientifically proven to benefit and heal the body. You see, I'm about health. And when my body is in a strong state of health, then it's like a warrior against illness. And in that way, I'm not only protecting myself, 
but I'm also protecting my patients. Moving my body, exercising, lifting weights, running, getting out in nature, spending quality time with my family and my dog. Exercise improves lymphatic drainage, gut health, and it feels good. This is what happiness is, and when you are happy, you're in a state of health. Thank you for taking the time to listen to some of my experiences. It is different for everyone. I would encourage more people to still tell their stories, since stories can be very healing and cathartic, as these ones have been for me.